about radio. Hi guys, um, I wanted to make myself a little uh, radio doorbell and um, this was a, a little project that I started um, oh, a year ago and then I got distracted on, uh, on other things but uh, you can see the original transmitter in my video about radio uh, part 39 so this is a very simple uh, device it has a single transistor that'll plug in here and then um, I, I had I used different coils that I plugged in there uh, just to uh, establish the operating frequency with any little transmitter like this the, uh, the hardest thing is actually finding resonance per se I got distracted and I built um, other uh, little transmitters um, of, um, all in the uh, the same sort of megahertz range um, and uh, oh, one in the medium wave band uh, range and that, they're all shown in my other videos um, the uh, the one I like best is the one that I show in about radio uh, number 41 and that's uh, that's a better quality thing this is uh, a little transmitter that I use uh, every day and it's permanently connected to the audio output of my TV set and um, uh, that just retransmits the, uh, the signal so as I can pick it up uh, around the house. Uh, the LED there is not a um, uh, a mains on light, it's actually uh, an antenna tuning light and you can see um, the details of this particular transmitter in about radio 41. I'll put links in the uh, um, under the show more box of, uh, of this video. Anyway I'll show you the circuit for this and what I intend to do is um, uh, I I shall make some sort of a little audio oscillator that will fit in this area here or at least that's the intention. I haven't designed it yet um, but I thought it would be easier if I start making the video from uh, from the beginning of uh, the project. Probably what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll sort of fire this up, I'll put a transistor in and I'll fire it up and then I'll drive in uh, um, from a signal generator um, uh, different frequencies and see what I think I want. Uh, I think I'm going to be looking for something like uh, one or two kilohertz um, but I don't know whether to use a sine wave or a square wave into there at the moment so I'll, uh, I'll put a test oscillator on it and uh, see what it uh, sounds like. I've uh, got the little uh, transmitter here now and I've uh, taken out uh, the uh, little uh, sockets that I got for the transistor and the coil and uh, fitted the transistor directly to the board and uh, I've made a, a six turn coil and uh, you can hear the radio is tuned to a, a vacant station and I've got um, a, a signal generator uh, set at 200 Hertz in, and that's feeding a, a square wave into the uh, transmitter and when I switch the transmitter on so you're hearing uh, that uh, 200 Hertz through the radio um, now if I put my um, other little transmitter on the one that I use to retransmit my TV signal then it actually kills that hiss um, but I think um, what I'll do is I'll either modify a radio or I'll build a, a dedicated uh, receiver for the uh, for the transmitter um, and I'll build in a, a squelch control something that cuts uh, that static um, so uh, what I will do is um, I'll also uh, that'll be the button that will operate the uh, the transmitter and what I will do is I'll put a, a capacitor, um, uh, quite a large capacitor, um, 
uh, after the button so as when I press the button or when somebody presses the doorbell it will actually uh, rapidly charge up a capacitor that will discharge so it will give the um, uh, the transmitter some persistence so maybe run it for a quarter of a second or something like that just so as if uh, somebody just presses the button very quickly uh, I'll have a constant time period of um, tone so anyway I'll uh, build the uh, a, a little oscillator uh, to fit on this board now in place of uh, this fella well I've um built a little uh, a stable multi-vibrator onto this board and um, oh by the way I, I've been playing with different coils and I've just tacked this one on the back uh, at the minute um, and uh, it works but uh, I've had to put um, uh, a little antenna on it to, uh, to get it to work but quite frankly it's, it's pretty disappointing um, oh, uh, by the way, I used a uh, PN2222A uh, NPN transistor for the transmitter and um, I'll, I'll put the circuit on uh, at the end of the video. But say, it's, it's very disappointing. Oh, the other thing that I did... I'll just turn this off. So yeah, I was disappointed by the range of the uh, transmitter so the other thing I did I thought I'd try this capacitor here the tuning capacitor I've repositioned that across here um, it's not a big difference so by uh, simply taking this capacitor and flipping it up to there it puts it in parallel with the inductor directly in parallel with the inductor um, uh, which um, uh, I, I like that circuit better but anyway it it made a slight improvement but uh, not much at all and then of course that, that was uh, removed from there um, so I'm going back to uh, the drawing board and I'm going to come up with a different design say so this is a design I took off the internet um, and when I used it as an audio transmitter it did work from room to room um, but uh, it's, it's just not man enough to do what I want uh, for the doorbell. I've uh, got the radio on and uh, the uh, little transmitter set up there. And what I've done, I've got the scope with a pickup coil there so as you can see the trace. See, that's a fair bit of uh, uh, amplitude modulation in there. It's hard to see any uh, sort of frequency modulation as this is uh, only a 20 meg scope and um, uh, I can't get it to lock on, um, uh, on this uh, high frequency. So I can't see any um, frequency modulation uh, in there and uh, this is with the uh, tank circuit uh, coil in parallel across the capacitor so I might just change it back to the original uh, series configuration. I've moved the capacitor back down to the uh, the ground rail so now it's in series uh, again and um, let me switch that on and that's the waveform that I get there now um, I can get it to stabilize that's the waveform I get now the actual amplitude will have uh, more to do with the coupling between these two coils um, but uh, it doesn't look an awful lot uh, different to me 
um, but I'll see it better when I actually get it on the screen and when I edit this uh, this video so I can compare the two. That's the transmitter, and I think on reflection, um, I don't know if it does work better with this capacitor up here as I showed you earlier. I felt as though it did, but it um, that may just be the, the the old thing of the latest thing you try is or the latest one you build is always the best. But anyway, I've put it back so as it looks like the drawing. What I did find was sometimes. Um, uh, the system works better with the uh, the aerial, or the antenna there, rather than connected to the collector. If it was connected to the emitter, um, it's uh, the whole thing seems a little bit more stable. Let's say this unit does work um, uh, as I wanted, uh, but its range is very very limited. Um, it also works with these transistors. I used. Um, the PN2222A but I've also uh, used the same circuit with a BC338 and uh, a BC547B. Uh, this is the re-edited uh, version of the circuit diagram because I made some silly mistakes uh, on the, uh, the first cut. <coughs> um, the uh, values of these uh, components are uh, 1.8k, 100k, 100k, 1k and uh, these two capacitors are 100 nanofarads. The transistors that I've used are ZTX651s, uh, NPN transistors, but pretty much any old uh, NPN transistor will do for this section and uh, with the components shown this uh, has a square wave output here of uh, 96.15 Hertz um, and uh, just zooming in a bit so as you can get that there and then the connections to the transmitter are of course the audio frequency goes in uh, across there um, this 9 volt rail is uh, a common rail and uh, of course the um, uh, the ground uh, is common ground there so we can uh, we can take that out for the, uh, the, the bell push what I talked about uh, with the capacitor if uh, that's a 9 volt battery there uh, if that's our 9 volt battery and um, the, um, the bell push is here and then that capacitor uh, 2200 uh, microfarads is there and then that goes to the to the 9 volt rail so uh, when the button is pressed the capacitor instantly charges the oscillator starts and the transmitter starts transmitting uh, but then when the button is released uh, there's a little bit of persistence from this I say um, I think you'd need probably uh, two of those capacitors um, both uh, 2200 microfarads Anyway, that's as far as I'm going to go on this video. I am going to make another transmitter, or I've got another transmitter that I've built, and I'm going to have a little play with that. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.